So, how does lithology control topography? Now, this was a question which was asked in Indian Forest Services 2019 mains examination. Now, this is not a very difficult question, but it is not also a very straightforward one. Everyone who has studied physical geography or geology will be able to write something in, in that answer. So how do you differentiate yourself from, from others? How do you write a perfect high scoring answer for su such kind of questions? But before we jump into the details, I would like you to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now coming back to the question, the question asks lithology controls on topography. So as with any good answer, you have to divide your answer into different parts. So there should be an introduction, there should be body and then there should, you should finish your answer with, with conclusions. What will you write in the introduction part? So in the introduction part, you will, you will define what, what topography is. So and then, then because the question specifically asks lithology control on topography. Now, it's, it's not that lithology is the only factor which controls topography. Now, just to show that, that you understand the topic in depth, what you can do is you can enumerate or list down different factors which control topography. What could be those factors? Climate, tectonics, structures, and then of course, lithology. And then you sort of like transition into, into this, how lithology controls uh, topography. Now, that that will come into this body part and then you can divide this body into different sort of like subheadings and, and then in each heading you, you write like how how is this uh, uh, lithology controlling topography some of the factors within like lithology which we which and, and which sort of like determine that interlink between lithology and topography could be first is differential weathering and differential erosion so here you define rocks such as competent versus incompetent rocks now this terminology could be a little confusing for for students who are not from geology background but it is these terms which which actually show you and or, or will be able to differentiate your answer from from answers of other people the rock such as sandstone is is more competent than shale okay so it is more resistant to weathering more resistant to erosion so sometimes it could be left behind and the surrounding shale could be eroded so that that affects topography there are solubility variations within rocks some rocks are more soluble than others for example limestone is is more soluble than uh, uh, than than say plastics uh, that is sandstones or, or shales and uh, that that results in development of for example cast topography then you come to drainage patterns drainage pattern is a very important descriptor of topography of an area how will drainage pattern affect or how is drainage pattern affected by lithology? Different rocks have different permeabilities. Different rocks have different directional properties. Okay. So for example, drainage density may be dependent on permeability. So here you, you write those kind of, of factors. Then finally, you come to anisotropy. Anisotropy, again, if you're from non-science background, it can be a little difficult to understand what, what this means, but anisotropy, in simple terms means just variation in, in properties with direction. Some rocks are, are isotropic, means they have same properties in, in all directions. So these kind of rocks can form rounded hills, for example. Granite is, is an example of that. Some rocks are highly anisotropic in, in which they, 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 they for example, what, what is it drawn here is, is for example, shales, they, they, they break along these planes and then they form like this plate like, like structure. So, Depending on anisotropic, you, you may see instead of rounded hills, for example, you may see linear ridges for, for some kind of rocks. So these are the four main factors. Of course, there could be others, but, but depending on like the answer that you have to write, if you write these factors, it will be a very good answer. So you'll start your introduction by defining topography. So topography describes the physical features of an area of land such as, so these features are, for example, lakes, rivers, mountains, hills, planes, elevation, etc. So that is the definition of, of topography. Then you list down what are the factors which, which affect topography. So these, these factors, not in, in, in order of, of importance, just, just listing them out. So the first is climate. Climate affects topography. Tectonics does affect topography. Structures, for example, presence of folds or faults, that is what affects topography. Now, vegetation of, of an area. So this vegetation is sort of like linked to, to, to climate also, but in, in, in itself, vegetation also affects topography of an area. Then 
human activities also affect topography now this is especially important for 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 the present day it may not have been important in the past and finally lithology affects topography and this is what we have to enumerate on or, or this is what we have to expand in in our uh, in, in in our subsequent sections in this answer now coming to the body so how does differential weathering or erosion control topography and that how lithology affects differential weathering and erosion so first of all rocks have varying degrees of resistance to weathering it could be due to different hardness or chemical stability or lithification some some rocks or or grains for example quartz has has seven is is seven uh, has seven hardness on more scales of hardness now quartz is also more chemically stable than many other minerals such as feldspars or or uh, more mafic minerals such as olivines and pyroxenes so quartz quartz will be more resistant whereas uh, minerals such as pyroxenes mica feldspar they will easily weather away lithification is its degree of 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 like lithification means compaction and cementation of 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 sediments to form rock now different types of sedimentary rocks may have different categories of lithification uh, if it is not Uh, if a rock is not well lithified it is easy to erode it and and, uh, and and whereas if if a rock is is well lithified it is more difficult to erode it now here what that is why so rocks which which are more resistant will call them competent I should write the spelling right and the ones which which are less resistance will call them incompetent rocks now you should also write some some examples of of where where it it this competent or incompetent rocks come into play to affect the topography now the first example that you see here is is that you you see a layered sequence which is tilted in this case and you have let's say for example this is the symbol for sandstone okay and then what you have here the, the second part which is with, denoted with this dash is is shale okay so shale is is incompetent in this case whereas sandstone is is competent so what has happened is 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 what is being shown in this example is that the sand is is sandstone is is more resistant to weathering so it it is forming higher elevation areas and and uh, the shale because it is more susceptible to weathering and erosion so it has been eroded away and, and it is forming lower elevation areas so so sand sands these linear ridges of of sand are left behind so you'll write linear ridges of sandstone and again in a layered sandstone shale sequence now in the second example actually what what we are trying to show is is that maybe you had a volcano vol uh, volcanic mountain in this area and that the actually because these are igneous rocks they are usually demonstrated by plus sign so we should draw this plus signs instead of dots because dots we use for sandstone so the central part of of a volcanic mountain which is the volcanic neck is is usually more resistant to weathering or erosion so i should say erosion in this case than the surrounding hill which which is generally formed of pyroclastic materials or uh, sedimentary materials so the surrounding country rock has has eroded away or it could be just other sedimentary rocks in, in which which have been intruded by a pluton they have now been eroded away and and what is left behind is just this volcanic neck and and that that is again forming a unique topographic features which which would not have been present if if the lithology control was not there so now in the second part you'll write about solubility different rocks have different solubilities some rocks are easily dissolved by meteoric waters now this is a new term which you are learning meteor meteoric water 
uh, again this demonstrate your your uh, in depth understanding of a subject so meteoric water is just the technical term for uh, for example rain water or or the ground waters which 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 are in 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 interaction with with atmosphere or are part of the hydrological cycle and and which 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 basically it's it's your rain water which which is seeping seeping into the ground now you can give example of of, of the, such a rock which which is easily dissolved by by meteoric waters and that will be limestone so especially if if those waters are acidic in nature it is easily soluble in in those waters and the example then now you have to give so for, for example formation of cast topography you don't need to elaborate a lot you still have um, you don't have like unlimited time in these answers but if you if you write about this so examiner will understand that you do know what what cast topography is and you don't need to explain anything in details more than this now lithology affects topography by affecting the drainage of a region now drainage it can affect the pattern of drainage or it can affect the frequency of drainage and then you can provide examples of of how it affects pattern and how it affects frequency now for example if you have unconsolidated rocks in uh, with with no particular fabric you will you will get a pattern which which is like a branching pattern branch like which we call the dendritic pattern now you may have another type of pattern which which is called terrellis pattern and then you can think of this this drainage pattern as you see those those uh how you divide farmland into into different different plots so this pattern develops in in regions where you have alternating competent and incompetent layers as we have seen in one of the previous examples finally you may get a pattern which is radial especially this develops in rocks which do, which do not have have any isotropy they are they are like having same properties in all directions and you have a central highland area so it may develop for rocks for example if it is a granitic batholith now granite is, is a different kind of rock than than the other kinds that we have seen here or or usually it it's it's in igneous rocks for example you may have a central volcano and then from that you you will have streams going in in all opposite or or in in all directions radially outwards now there are other other drainage patterns also but but they are they are controlled for example by structures you may have a rectangular drainage pattern in in jointed rocks for example but here we have to discuss the impact of lithology only so these three should suffice to say how lithology impacts drainage in 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 this area so in the final part we have to describe how an isotropy which is dependent on lithology affects topography so we we can first of all describe or or, or differentiate between isotropic and anisotropic um, rock types for example isotropic rocks are the ones which have same properties irrespective of the direction so in all directions they have same properties on the other hand anisotropic rocks they have different properties in different directions so examples of isotropic rocks are a rock such as granite so they do not have any internal fabric or uh, bedding or foliation anything which we should impart its it, it directional properties or you can have massive sandstones now massive is is again a term just for a structureless sandstone which does not show evidence of internal lamination beddings things like that and isotropic rocks for example shales shales have have property called fissility that is a property which which uh, in which the shale breaks into those sheets uh, or 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 like sort of uh, uh, simple plates and then other metamorphic rocks which which have strong foliation such as schists phyllites slates they have strong anisotropy so so their their, their structure is is more like this layered so they they will have this this for example mostly these foliated rocks which which for example could be metamorphic rocks so they will have different properties when you are going perpendicular to layers in comparison to when you are going parallel to the layers so you you give examples of these and then you have to give give like one example each of of how it can affect landforms now isotropic uh, if if your lithology is isotropic mostly in in an area you may have for example rounded hills so if you go to south india for example in in many places if you see batholiths go to bangalore lal bagh uh, where you find like one of the oldest rocks in in india so there you have these these sort of like rounded hills sometimes they may be uh, jointed due to, uh, but, but overall you will see these these that they they are more or less rounded in case of anisotropic rocks and especially if you can have like resistant and less resistant rocks so you you may have something what we call faceted hills so one side you see is is more or less weathered and then the side which which is defined by these these sort of like 
layers internal layers it it may it may it may be sort of like appear like a plane so these these are examples of how an isotropy of of a rock can can affect topography so now we have to end our answer with with the conclusion and in the conclusion we will we'll just write that we have seen the impact of of lithology on topography of an area and although many factors may influence topography lithology is is one of the most crucial ones and if you want in in your answer you can actually give give an ex indian example for example if if you look at the topography uh, in 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 the deccan region of india so it is strongly affected by pre presence of volcanic rocks basalts which we call deccan basalts so so and and for example there you see uh, geomorphic features such as table top mountains which which again are are controlled by those uh, interlayering of of lava flows with with sedimentary layers so these lava flows they are known as the traps and and the sedimentary layers they they are known as intra trap trapian beds so mostly it it's it's not just dependent on lithology it it depends on on the geometry of of those traps and inter intra trapian beds but again lithology also plays a role in that